I'm going to introduce to you Pat or Patricia Caulfield, who's going to come up to the stage in a few minutes as well, and she's going to tell us her story. She is a donor, an incredible volunteer, and advocate for GRF. And what I learned about her was she was an award-winning, for 20 years, award-winning winning, a kitchen and bath designer, which I think is really cool. So take a look at my kitchen if you can, because <laughs> I need a lot of work. But she unfortunately developed glaucoma 10 years ago. And a after her diagnosis with, for glaucoma, based upon the, in her life, she kind of focused her attention, even though she was an artist for many years, focused on her attention for the last 10 years being an artist. And so we'd love to hear her story and kind of how that changed her life, the diagnosis of glaucoma, living with glaucoma, and her interest in art as well. So with that said, I'm going to introduce on stage here Patricia or Pat Caulfield to share her inspiring story. So welcome to the stage. Thank you, I appreciate that. Hi, good morning everyone. How are you today? Uh, everybody doing good? Great, good, I'm so happy to be here. Um, I'm very pleased and honored to be standing here this morning. It's a place I never thought I would be. I'd like to talk today about my journey with glaucoma. I was diagnosed 10 years ago. On a routine visit to my optometrist, I remember that I sat in shock when she said to me those three little words that no one ever wants to hear, you have glaucoma. I went into a panic because there was no warning. This was a routine visit. This wasn't supposed to happen. Things were going great and I was now faced with this new challenge for the rest of my life. And as we all know, there is no cure for this disease, not yet. At the time, I was working in Baltimore with a contractor, and as you, as you heard previously, I was designing, creating, and installing kitchens and baths. As you can see in the photos, I loved what I did. I worked with a custom cabinet maker, and I would field measure the job site, and then I would design and create the space to my specifications. It was then built according to my floor plans. I had to include every detail, and I drafted every single space by hand. As my glaucoma progressed, it began to become laborious to read a tape measure. The drawings that I created became harder to draft, and even driving became difficult. Five years into my diagnosis, my pressures took a spike. They went from being in the teens to the 40s. I began to lose vision quite rapidly in my left eye. My doctor was at the Wilmer Eye Institute at the Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, Dr. Derek Wellsby. You may have heard of him. He is one of four scientists for the Catalyst for the Cure for the Glaucoma Research Foundation. He recommended that we perform a barvelt shunt right away and got me into surgery immediately. The recovery time was long, but I'm grateful to say that it was successful. However, kitchen design became increasingly more difficult for me. It became stressful, <laughs> believe me, very frustrating and just plain impossible. I decided to go back into my first love, which is drawing and painting. I have been an artist my whole life, but I had to put it on the back burner many times due to career demands. I was the vice president of a cabinet manufacturing company, and then I went out on my own as a designer. I also taught at the Art Institute for 13 years in the interior design program, and I loved every minute of it. My drawings, as you can see, were very tight and very detailed, much like the drafting work that I had done for many years. That's when I decided, with vision loss, I needed to change my style, and I went into abstract work. Now, <laughs> that's not as easy as it sounds. I took many, many courses and had to learn new techniques and just new ways of creating art that felt more like me. And my art became more authentic. It became more me. During this period of time, even though I was very happy with what I was doing, I began to lose central vision in the right eye. That was a big surprise, let me tell you. I was still on drops, many different drops, many of which I could not tolerate. My new eye doctor at the Wilmer Eye Institute was Dr. Randy Craven, and he decided we needed to do a trabulectomy right away. 
once again, I got back into surgery. Then the pressures began to go up in my left after I had the surgery in the right eye. <laughs> so he decided we again needed to do another trabulectomy. Through all of this, I have felt so very fortunate to have doctors that were so caring and compassionate and knew what to do at the time that it was needed. For that, I am so very grateful because right now I am stable and I am on no medication at all. Yeah. <laughs> but I know this can change, but I also know that I'm in good hands. Yes, there were times of panic. There were times when I stressed over what the outcome was going to be and what my prognosis was. However, with the help of my family and my friends, and especially my husband, I was able to get through some really tough times. Gleaning information and knowledge about glaucoma and the different methods of treatment, as well as accepting this disease, was critical for me in maintaining a good outcome. The Glaucoma Research Foundation's website is succinct, current, and very, very informative. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. The blog is pretty great, too. So I just have to say that I have met so many incredible people, just wonderful stories along this path, and sometimes I think I wouldn't trade this journey for anything. And to think, this isn't a path I ever would have taken if I didn't have glaucoma. An artist friend of mine recently said to me, I love your vision, when she was looking at a new piece that I had just finished. That's, that's this one, it's called Dono in Requiem. And it took me aback, and then I realized that vision means more than sight. Although I have lost a lot of my actual vision, I have not lost my creativity, not one ounce. Being active and outside in nature, running with my dog, showing and selling my artwork, and learning new techniques and simply not stopping doing the things that I love creates a balance for me. Currently, I have my artwork in two shows where I live, and in September, I have another solo show in Cape May, New Jersey. Last year, I was commissioned to do four paintings at the Wellspan York Cancer Center in their main lobby. <laughs> to be able to create artwork that touches someone and gives them peace when they're going through such a difficult time really brings me much joy. I can't even tell you, I was simply overwhelmed. And I'm also working with the Glaucoma Research Foundation again this year, curating art from visually impaired artists like me for their annual event, Glaucoma 360, to be held in San Francisco in 2023. This year, this past February, was the first time for the art show in silent auction. It was so very successful that I was simply overwhelmed. The entire three-day event raised over $1 million for research and education. While I have this disease, glaucoma, glaucoma doesn't have me. Going through this journey, I have turned those three little words that I heard 10 years ago, you have glaucoma, into three new words for me. You've got this. Yes, I do, and so do you. Keep having fun, laugh more, keep getting those checkups, keep pushing yourself to do more, take care of you. Eat your veggies, eat your leafy greens, eat your carrots. Your mother was right. Try to get 30 minutes of cardio in a few days a week if you can. Even just walk if you can. Strive to be your very best every single day. We only get one chance at this thing called life. Love every moment that you are given, no matter what it brings. Run with it and don't look back. Thank you so much for your time this morning. I will be uh, over at the Glaucoma Research Foundation's booth later on this morning with Christopher Wiseman, who is the Director of Events and Engagement. And if you get a chance, please stop over and see me, as I would love to meet every one of you and hear your stories as well. Thank you so much. <laughs>